Welcome to this video from In 28 Minutes. Thanks for helping us provide awesome learning experiences to more than 300,000 learners across multiple platforms, Udemy, Safari and Pact. Let's welcome our lead instructor, Ranga Rao Karanam. Welcome back. In this video, we'll discuss about the modularity of the Spring framework. One of the important things about Spring is that it's not one big framework. So, what do I mean by that? During the example, when we looked at the modules which were present, so if you look at the Maven dependencies which are present in here, it's not one big Spring jar which is present. There are a lot of small jars which are present. Spring Context, Spring AOP, Spring Beans. You would see other Spring stuff also right beneath. You can see Spring Core in here, Spring JCL. And you also see the Spring Test module in here. So Spring is not really one big framework. It's not like you have to use the entire Spring framework or you don't use it at all. Spring is built in a very modular way. And this enables you to use specific modules without using the other modules of Spring. Until now, whatever we have been using is the core container of the Spring framework. We were using Spring Beans, Core and Context. So we were creating an application context. We were using Spring to manage our dependencies, that's Beans. These were the core container modules that we were using until now. So until now, whatever we have seen, the examples which we have seen until now are using the core container module. Spring also has very good integration with data and integration layers. What do you mean by a data layer? Data layer is something which talks to a database, right? So I would want to talk to a database and get the data from there or I would want to store some data to the database or I would want to talk to other systems. So for example, I would want to connect to a web service. Those kind of things are called integration. I would want to probably send a message on a queue. Spring also has good support for those stuff. One of the important data access modules is Spring JDBC, which makes JDBC much more easier. Spring JDBC makes it easier. Something which would take 25 lines of code in JDBC would typically take 5 to 10 lines of code in Spring JDBC. The other thing Spring has is good integration with all ORM frameworks, object relational mapping frameworks. Some of the important object relational mapping frameworks are Hibernate and MyBatis. MyBatis is not really a true ORM framework, but it kind of has some of the ORM features. Spring has good integration with them through the ORM module. And Spring has good integration with JMS. So you want to talk to some other application over the queue, then through Spring JMS, you'd be able to talk to the other application. You can put messages on the queue. And wherever object to XML transformation is needed, in those kind of scenarios, Spring OXM provides a lot of useful features. One of the important things with the data access or integration is the transaction management, right? So you would want all the steps in a transaction to be successful or you would want all of them to be rolled back. So let's say if the transaction involves four steps and the third step failed, you would want to roll back the first two steps also. So Spring has great support for transaction management. The other important Spring modules are inside the web space. So Spring has really good connections with web frameworks like Struts. Spring also offers a web framework of its own. It's called Spring MVC. And portlets are kind of outdated. I wouldn't really worry about portlets if I'm developing something right now. Spring has good support for web sockets also. So we covered the data access layer. We covered the web layer. The focus shifts to cross-cutting stuff. What do you mean by cross-cutting? Typically, when you talk about applications, they have multiple layers. So we looked at things in the web layer. We looked at things in the data layer. There are things which are applicable to more than one layer. Those are called cross-cutting concerns. One of the cross-cutting concerns is unit testing. You would want to be able to unit test things in the web layer, in the business layer, and the data layer as well. Those kind of things are called cross-cutting concerns. So as far as the test framework is concerned, Spring has good support for unit testing through the Spring test framework. Spring also enables implementation of things like security, logging through aspect-oriented programming. So Spring has a module of its own called Spring AOP to do basic aspect-oriented programming. 
If you want to do advanced aspect oriented programming with a framework like AspectJ, Spring provides really good integration with it as well. In this short video, we were looking at the different modules which are offered by the Spring framework. It has solutions for the web layer, it has solutions for business layer, data access layer, and it has solutions for cross-cutting concerns. Until the next step, bye-bye. In 28 minutes is providing awesome learning experiences to 300,000 learners across platforms like Udemy, Safari Online, and Pact. We have clogged million hours of learning in the last few months. The question is, what do you want to learn next? We are building solutions to help programmers at all levels. You can learn programming with our awesome courses on Java, Python, and JavaScript. You can learn full stack development with REST APIs and microservices with a wide range of frameworks like Spring Boot, Node.js, React, Angular, and Spring Cloud. We have 200 plus videos to help you start your journey from a programmer to a software architect. We have videos to help you learn frameworks, industry trends, including things like microservices, learn the best practices in architecture, design, and code quality. Thanks for watching. Keep learning in 28 minutes.